Hey everybody. Hi everybody. I just wanted to show you what I was doing here, like a couple of adjustments, and I've got some old manuals, so I was just checking the, between the dogs here to make sure that their their spacing is within the point three zero to point three five. Uh, you'll see what happens when you trip them that uh, you know the escapement moves here, but that their clearance is good between these two here, and it's about point three three, so I'm good. Um, but anyway, that's this is an old uh, silent. You guys have probably seen this before in my videos, and um, there's a few other things that I, I was adjusting and playing with here. Let's start with. The, uh, the manual and things about the silent though. The silent and the flat top, so people uh, back in the day that had the flat tops, they compl especially this black, they complained about the glare. That was their, the glare of the light was their complaint. And thus, I think that's probably why the Speedline model was born. If you know what the Speedline model is, it's along the lines of the clipper, um, but in the silent world you have the ability to get the platen off in a, in a pinch for, to a harder platen roll if you choose to change it um, with this sliding uh, opener here. That's the thing about silent is you could put a harder platen roll in to do better stencils. That is uh, something I guess not everybody really knows about. But also um, that, that these, these bodies, when people didn't want to get a new typewriter, of course, and they had, and they didn't like this body, and they wanted to speed line it. The parts needed to do that. Uh, here's the uh, 1938, 6-1 of 1938. Two pages from the Corona, Smith Corona factory about all the parts and the changings you need to put a speed lined body casing on the old style body here. Um, tells you about taking off the previous model's cover plates and the back plates and uh, in regards to the, the paper bale, how it was sold as an assembly uh, and all the changes you needed to do to make it a speed line model. They were that, that close in, uh, in ability, I guess, and the adjustments involved. Wow, lots of stuff. I, I guess it would be surprising, though, if you were checking serial numbers and you went, oh, wow, this is a, you know, Speedline Smith Corona, and it's on a, you know, 1933 Silent or something. It would, it would just be kind of cool to see that, though. But, you know, you got the paper bale thing and, and the paper fingers. Um, what I was playing with here was some adjustments, though. So... This book, let me get to the right page, uh, 202 is where it starts. This is about um, how adjusters actually adjust per the Royal Typewriter Factory. They're uh, type, typewriters. The aligners get in, and sure, the letter H shares the type bar, but you know the letter Q and things go below it. But aligners have a secret seven-word sentence. Let me get this in here for you, and I'll type it in our explanation of this video. It's not the quick brown fox jumps the lazy dog or now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their party. It's um, this here. Now notice there's double spacing between this. Some words are, there's a lot of consonants going on in the vowels in there and the way it jumps, and it ends with Philadelphia. What this is going to tell you is how out of whack your alignment really is. So you use this sentence here. This is what aligners used. Um, there's, there's pages of, of explanations of why, but it's, it's the alignment test. If you do a little capital and then lowercase below it, you'll see why and how far off your words really are too. Uh, you know. Let me just get through these pages and point out some of the... If, if you type with the word Philadelphia, and it, it's a good problem word, the I-L combination may be beautiful, but the E-L may, may appear as a model of neatness, but the L perhaps is ever so slightly off to the left, and then it's separate from the Fia part. 
you'll, you'll notice this stuff if you type it out that way. And, and you know, juxtaposing. Use the letter N as your reference letter. And then N-A, N-B, N-C, N-D. Do that, and you'll, it'll stand out for you. Um, and then you'll see what, your, what type bars you need to bend. This is what they had to submit to even get a typewriter out into the public. They had to submit that to, uh, it's called a strike up, and they had to submit that to their boss head. And uh, if it passed inspection, then the typewriter went out. And if it didn't, you know, they might say go back and correct the letter O or something. Now, anyway, that aside, so I was doing that, of course, and when I had this typewriter apart, um, I had the paper scale off and everything, and it came to me that, oh, the left side was just a little bit lower than the right side, and I needed to bring it up, and only because I typed a whole sentence and not just the letter like H. Let me get this in here now. So now you can see that that's all on par with the whole scale all the way down, except that guy there, that little letter M, is just a little higher than everything else. And only because I typed that sentence do I know that. I didn't notice that ever before. That, that my little letter M needs to come down just a hair. And I, I did all the other tests too, though. I did it in uppercase, lowercase. I did some juxtaposing. Uh, I, I drew, oh yeah, in case the letter M between it. I did a, a line here. Of course, my paper wasn't in straight, so when I went to line it up, the better way for me was to just do this whole sentence. But... If I got to bring that, that letter M down just a hair, now that I've got a true set um, bar there, why is my, for some reason my camera stand wanted to drop. All right, I'm going to show you. So these are some of the tools you'd be using. Now these, if this here is an IBM one, and you'll probably find one of them. If you needed to turn a type head or something, IBM part number 9900093 is really what, you know, Ames used to make, uh, except Ames ones, of course, are a little wider. But that's a type bar, type guide, twister type tool. And that's not what I need. I don't need to turn it left or right. Unfortunately, my letter M needs to come down a little bit. So, I need, and then these are some other tools that IBM made, so in case you had to go left or right with the type head itself, it goes in there. They incorporated later in IBM uh, this tool into the sides of the type slug bender as well. But, let's get to this M. In this case, so this is one of those tools that you reverse, depending on left or right, um, if you want to go up or down with the bar. And I need to go down with it, not away from it. I need to go in with it. So I'm going to grab this here and just give it a quick, just a little... Nope, I got that backwards. I need to go this way with it. You have to kind of pay attention because you got to get it between all three uh, bender parts. And then you got... Just use the minimal, minimalist of anything you got to do any of this. So I'm going to go just a, just a touch. That's it. Now let's see what happened. Let's just see what happened. Whew. Terrifying. I'm just going to type that first word here. The A and the M are lining up good, but I can see now that, uh, see now I, I couldn't see that N was just up a little bit before either. So I straightened, by, by having that whole sentence I was able to get enough bottoms of letters to make my type, my uh, paper bar, you know, paper scale perfect straight across to how the letters are because I had enough straight ones. but. I started with the M, seeing that as high, and now, now that that's corrected, and 
better than it was anyhow. Now I can see that I've got a few other ones that I want to tinker with. It looks like the end might be my next my next one. But I'm not going to go much with any of these. So that's how you do it anyway. Tedious, tedious work. These guys sat uh, at their workbenches for hours, you know, making these little adjustments. Let's see if I can find a picture of them all sitting at their benches for you quick before we go. Um, here. This is, these are one corner of the department. They call it, it was the 10C. This is the final adjustment department. And uh, they could be sitting there for three hours on one machine before it ever went out in the public. And they were doing this kind of little piddly stuff, these final adjustments. But that's how you do them. Have a good day, everybody.